Climate change is only getting worse, and it seems like the billionaire founder of Breakthrough Energy Ventures stepped in. He's already got a leading climate technology investment company that's aimed at driving down climate pollution, but now he's taking it a step further with some new climate plans. In this video, we're going to look at his new strategies, along with five other billionaires who are more linked to agriculture than you might think. First off, he's moving on climate adaptation to fix the existing damage. We know that Bill Gates has been quite concerned about climate change, as we all should be. But since he has the resources, people got their eyes set on him to see what difference he can make. And just so it happens, his climate-oriented venture capital fund is now expanding its mission. Now, that means investment categories are going to change a bit. And of course, all of this is eventually going to lead to a later stage fund that aims to help clean tech startups build plants and scale their technologies. In fact, he announced the changes just a few days ago at the firm's Breakthrough Energy Summit in Seattle yesterday. Wondering why it's such a big deal? Well, until now, the fund only focused on climate mitigation. So, that only revolved around driving down climate pollution. But now, they're moving on to climate adaptation. And that's all about bolstering protection against the dangers of climate change, rather than just trying to prevent it. So, you prevent and prepare yourself. And considering the state of our environment, this step is pretty crucial. The firm's new focus is going to include a bunch of ways to help farmers and communities manage the increasingly common or severe droughts. Along with that, it's also going to help crops remain productive as the world becomes wetter, hotter, or drier. And they're going to do that by indoor farming and genetic alteration. Following up, Bill Gates thinks rich countries need to step up. We're not going to disagree here. Rich countries have the resources to step up their spending so they can speed up innovation and technological advancement. Of course, that's going to help the world reduce greenhouse emissions. At least, that's what Gates said. He thinks that developing economies are also responsible for most of the same emissions that cause global warming. As for low and missile income countries, we shouldn't be expecting them to show the development of their economies for the sake of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. At least, when other countries have better resources, they could invest more easily. So, Gates definitely has a point there. The co-founder of Microsoft even pointed out that some of the richest countries, like the United States, also owe a lot of their current wealth to the burning of fossil fuels. And it's only understandable to expect them to fund the innovation process of technologies that's going to decarbonize all sectors of the economy. Moving on, he even published an essay to share his opinions on on the world's reaction. We definitely suggest giving it a read. In the essay, State of the Energy Transition, he gives a brief retrospective of how he views the world's response to global warming over the last 15 years since he began learning about climate change. While his assessment was encouraging in some ways, it was pretty bleak in others. He's pretty impressed by how some governments and private companies have finally realized the urgency of climate change and fueled their investments to battle it. But he's also super honest about how the world still isn't moving fast enough or isn't unified enough to meet the challenge. And for him, that seems to be the hardest and most existential crisis that humanity has ever faced. And who would disagree with that? Let's put things into perspective. Bill Gates says the world still needs to reduce annual greenhouse gas emissions from 51 billion tons to zero. But global emissions continue to increase every year. It seems like we are nowhere close to where we should be. In fact, look at the annual Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reports. You're hardly going to see any scenario for limiting the global temperature rise to 1.5 or even 2 degrees Celsius. Not to mention, every country needs to play its part. Now, if we're going to try slowing down global warming in the extreme weather events we might have to face, if things keep going at this pace, all countries need to stop releasing greenhouse gases. And that includes gases like carbon dioxide and methane gas too. But does an abrupt change like that seem possible to you? Of course not. That's exactly why we need a unified approach to make a bigger difference. Bill Gates says that the proper measure of success is literally greenhouse gas emissions worldwide. In the next three years, we've got to drop to zero. And for that, the world needs to create and deploy technology that's going to enable the same economic activity as burning fossil fuels. But all of that is with no greenhouse gas emissions. But there are manufacturing costs, production costs, agriculture, transportation, and building costs. Who's going to take the financial liability here? So, the only workable solution, according to the billionaire, is to simply make better and cheaper alternatives that don't emit greenhouse gases. And of course, for that to happen, richer countries need to be at the front. Finally, cleaner and cheaper alternatives just might save our planet. Now we know that developing countries are the major culprits here, but along with that, they've also got the responsibility to achieve the standard of living their people need right now. Many countries in Europe and North America filled the atmosphere with carbon to get where they are now. And for Gates, that's both unrealistic
unrealistic and unfair to expect everyone else to just let go of a comfortable life, because that same carbon is now changing the climate. So, the difference hides in the cost between cleaner alternatives and conventional ones. To bring this down, we need to make clean alternatives available at an affordable cost, so countries have the financial privilege to choose them over fossil fuel burning alternatives. And for that, we're gonna need government intervention to speed up the process. It might take longer than expected, but getting everyone on the same page isn't the easiest task in the world. A unified approach is the only way we're gonna achieve this. Now let's look at other billionaires who are into agriculture and why. Let's start off with number five with Harry Stein. For many, agriculture might be the perfect investment opportunity that pays off big. But if you look at the very rare, yet existing, philanthropy-minded billionaires, they're out there trying to help the less fortunate. If we talk about Harry Stein, he's got at least 900 patients under his belt. The founder of Stein Seed made his money through plant genetics he sells to the big boys. Yep, we're talking about Syngenta and Monsanto, and a bunch of others. In fact, at least 60% of soybeans grown in the US have genetics that were developed by his businesses. Next up at number four, we've got Liu Yong Hao. All right, so he's even nicknamed China's richest chicken farmer. And that's also because he made all of his initial wealth in that line of work. So the name just caught on eventually, but he never stayed in the same place. If anything, he's diversified into a bunch of other endeavors that even stretch to banking and finances. In fact, while Yong Hao has turned over the chairmanship of his massive agribusiness New Hope to his daughter, he's still completely involved in the business. Following up at number three is Jim Rogers. This American investor and businessman is literally bullish on agriculture. In fact, he literally put in an enormous investment to snap up an agricultural company a few months ago. And that's not all. It turns out he's also the director of a pretty large Russian fertilizer company. Coming up at number two is Larry Ellison. Now we're talking about the CEO of the global technology corporation, Oracle. Not only that, but he also owns about 98% of the Hawaiian island of Lanai. And even though he bought it a decade ago in 2012, it definitely wasn't cheap. We're talking about $300 million here. He's got some ambitious plans to ramp up the island's sustainable agriculture capabilities by building a state-of-the-art facility that's going to involve both aquaponics and hydroponics. Along with that, he hopes to feed the island's 3,000 residents and even get thousands of tourists coming in every single year. Last but not least, at number one, we've got Bill Gates, the best-known billionaire who, as we mentioned, got a lot of plans for agriculture. If that's not enough, he's also got the resources to fuel his plans. In fact, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has also become one of the world's largest supporters of agricultural research and development. Along with that, it's also the number one funder for research into genetic engineering. That's a wrap for this video. What's your take on Bill Gates' new climate plans? And while we're at it, which one of the five billionaires were you shocked to see on that list? Let us know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.